Hi again. Now we start to unveil the great lectures about oral rehabilitation that we will have in this six full days program. I'm happy and proud to present the French world-renowned speaker, active member of the Stal Italiano group, Dr. Stéphane Kubi. Stéphane got his dental degree and his PhD by the University of Marseille, where he still keeps a position of associate professor in the restorative department. Dr. Kubi focuses his lectures and practice in indirect restorations, especially his main topic is about the treatment of the worn dentition. Stefan is also professor of some international post-graduation programs and has his own training center since 2013 called L'Institut de la Facette, where he focuses on smile design and cosmetic rehabilitation. Let's hear Dr. Stefan Kubi on the subject repeatable and predictable protocol in the treatment of worn dentition, the full mock-up concept for the everyday practice. See you in a couple of hours. Hello everybody, it's a great honor for me to be with you during for this uh, incredible project that uh, has been uh, uh, organized by uh, YOAO and um, I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, fantastic uh, challenge. So my name is Stefan Kubim, I'm coming from Marseille and um, I want to share with you for the next uh, 50 minutes uh, a simple way of treatment in, uh, in the one dentition topic and uh, I would like to highlight of course uh, what we have really uh, focused on for the last uh, six seven years which is the full mock-up concept and uh, the aim of that is to try to provide to the community uh, something consistent and repeatable for the everyday practice which are probably for me the key factor uh, for most part of the general practitioner. What do we know about the one dentition? The one dentition uh, is a very hot topic since more than 10 years and uh, it has been highlighted a lot by Francesca Vailati at the end of the notice with a beautiful papers in the European Journal of Aesthetic Dentistry and at that time she presented the three-step technique and for many of us I think it was uh, something very interesting and very uh, it was like a, a game changer you know in the vision of the treatment of the functional topic because uh, until now we all know that we prefer to play in the pros uh, in the pros uh, department Every time you had to speak about function, vertical dimension, uh, full art rehabilitation. And thanks to the very nice paper of Francesca, uh, we started to understand that uh, it could be possible also to use all the advantages of the minimally invasive dentistry, uh, even if in the functional topic. And I think that it, uh, it became um, something very uh, consistent and very useful for uh, all the community. And after that, we started also to, to work on this topic to see uh, how it's possible, you know, to match all of, all of this adhesive dentistry in the functional topic. The challenge of the one dentition, especially the challenge of the treatment 
is supposed to be based on three two main topics. First is to be able to recognize and second is to be able to treat in a contemporary way. What does it mean? It means that if you want to understand first why, why the clinical situation were like this and how it was possible in only four appointments or three appointments to get to this final outcome, it's important first to understand what was the causes of this very advanced um, erosion process. And of course, what also we need to know is if you look at the initial situation, from this initial situation, we want to, to be able to show, to provide to the patient something which is uh, physical. We need to check what will be the new function and what will be the new aesthetic. And with the, the full mocal concepts that we will present, uh, the aim is just to show it like a, a plug and play, which means something that in, in a couple of two, three minutes, you are able to place in the mouth and the patient will be able to see it directly. And of course, once this uh, project is validated in any sense, which means validated aesthetically and validated functionally, then after, of course, the case will be almost finished because we have already all the direction and all the treatment will be driven by this uh, validated project. And after, it's, it will be almost nothing to convert this project in uh, the final uh, restoration with the final outcome, but without any kind of surprise. And I think that that's the challenge that all of us are facing in our everyday practice. So the most important question is to understand how it's possible to play between the, the last three different pictures from the initial situation to the aesthetic project and functional project and then to transform it to uh, a final and consistent um, um, final restoration. So the question is that we are looking for something which is feasible, something which is teachable, and a technique that all of us will be able to repeat. And I think that these three keywords are crucial for a better understanding and also to improve the access of that type, that type of full art rehabilitation. Uh, because many of our colleagues will have to face that type of uh, one dentition challenge. And uh, we have to do, be able to take care of this and not to be afraid by that type of uh, clinical situation. So, what do we know is, of course, one of the first difficult part for the dentist is to be able to recognize. And second is to be able to provide the proper treatment to such a challenge. So, to recognize what we know from uh, already a long time. In the web process, you have different um, etiology. Of course, if you speak about attrition, attrition is not at all something pathologic. It's something physiologic that all of us are doing every day. Then when you enter in the pathologic uh, process, you can see that you have different options. You can find what we call abrasion, which is uh, a mechanical uh, destruction because of a mechanical loading. And also you can find some erosion, but erosion is 
a chemical attack. And in may, most part of the case, you have a mix of both of them. It's not only erosion, it's not only abrasion. In many cases, we have to face mix of this. So, uh, this means that, uh, clinically speaking, you have to be able to recognize if the patient is that type of profile. Of course, it's not because of erosion. This is because of abrasion. And if you look at that type of things, only erosion is able to explain uh, such uh, destruction. So, why it's important to identify the causes? Honestly, not for the treatment, because it doesn't change anything. But it will be important to identify it for one main reason, for the long-term prognosis of our treatment. Because, of course, you all know that if you have to make bonded restoration in a very acidic environment, we know that the long-term behavior of the bonding will be probably uh, lower than if you are in ideal condition. Why? Because of uh, the acidity attack of the cement, the resin, about the material, about the margin. And this acidity attack, of course, could, you know, affect the long-term uh, behavior of uh, our restoration. So, the second challenge, as I told you, is about the treatment. The treatment, you need, we need just to highlight a little bit this very nice study from uh, Gigi and Lucy, and uh, we learn two main things. The first thing is about the frequency. We know that now 50% of our patients are affected by a wear process. Sometimes it's very low, thin, sometimes it's uh, very severe, and then we have to treat. So, but 50% of our patients are already affected in our everyday practice. Then the second uh, diagram is able to highlight the fact that now the frequency of young patient is the same as the frequency of older patient. And this is something new, because this means that now we will have to deal more and more with young patient. And this means that we will have to focus in a different way. Why? Because if you have to treat a full arch rehabilitation or an important full month rehabilitation with a young patient, you need, of course, to think of the next step, which means in 10 years, 15 years. And this will change in a significant way the treatment planning. And that's why automatically, the moment you start to think about re-intervention in 10, 15 years, then we have to use partial bonded restoration, not to go directly with a crown. Otherwise, what will be the next step? And that's basically the question that we need to think about. This uh, new frequency is confirmed by this beautiful paper uh, from uh, Bartsley, where they explain basically, and this is why all of the dentists has to understand how important is the topic of the one dentition, because it will be an important uh, topic of the future in the everyday practice. We will treat less and less decay, and we will have to treat more and more one dentition um, issue. So this means that um, this topic of the one dentition is um, an ever-increased problem, and this is something international, not something from one country. Another also very important paper uh, will uh, let them understand, let us understand, sorry, that the 
main concern for the patient is about aesthetic. They don't know if they have or not a wear process, but they just see in the mirror that the the smile line start to be more and more uh, reduced. They can see that the proportion of the central incisor are affected. The teeth uh, look shorter, and this is mainly uh, the biggest motivating factor uh, for our, our patients. So again, aesthetic is the key. But then, from this, we we have to explain clearly to the patient that because of the aesthetic issue, we want to redesign something pleasant, something in harmony with the nice proportion. But to offer this, we need to create the functional condition in order to let the smile line be enhanced by the new uh, occlusion. And this is why aesthetic and function are completely plugged, especially for the topic of the worn dentition. And um, we have, we need to know some number, you know, in order to understand how it works in the nature. Every year, in the posterior part, we are losing 30 microns. And in for the premolar, we are losing 15 microns. This is something regular. But we need to explain to the patient, and it can be something very useful when you will explain the treatment planning that you are looking for, that every time you see that there is no more enamel on the surface, patient has to understand that the destruction, the speed of the destruction will increase by 10, which is a lot. And that's why all of our treatment, all of our message is to try to touch as soon as possible, to protect as soon as possible in order, you know, to postpone this destruction and to create a kind of new artificial enamel able to protect. Because the moment we start to increase the destruction of the dentin, after, of course, the, the speed will, uh, the speed of the destruction will be uh, very important. And then the severity of the destruction will become more and more important, which means that it will be more complicated to keep the vitality. It will be more and more complicated to use some adhesive technique. So that's why we need to be able to prevent and to treat soon and not to wait that we are already at a very advanced uh, level where only the pros is the, is, um, the solution. So this means that, of course, biology has to be the main pillar to reconstruct the full arch. So this means that all our uh, concern, all our way of thinking has to be driven by how is it possible to preserve the biology. And when you understand this uh, important uh, paradigm shift, which means not to ask the tooth to be adapted to the material, but the material to be adapted to the fact that we don't want to touch the tooth, then you understand that, of course, the treatment that we will use, the workflow that we need to play with, has to be 180 degrees different from what we learn from the pros. And uh, this biological concern is confirmed, you know, by this very nice uh, symposium and consensus that has been made uh, this year. And I think that uh, it's important just to highlight um, one of the conclusions or one of the guidelines that a beautiful team of uh, specialists around the, the topic of the wound dentition and especially which type of treatment uh, should be recommended uh, in the future. And if you look at what they propose, we have just to check 
especially these sentences. Direct and indirect minimally invasive technique can be employed using adhesive material, traditional, which means a crown, invasive restoration remain an option in selected cases under certain circumstances. So this means that the first option that the dentist needs to have in mind when he is thinking about how to deal with the case is to go for minimally invasive treatment, which means bonding uh, restoration, partial bonded restoration, which means preserving as much as possible. So this is today mandato, mandatory. Then it's important to highlight some fact. One of the biggest issues for the dentist is that in many cases, they start directly by watching the case and already thinking about which type of tool they could use. Do I have to use composite? Do I have to use veneers, crown, implant, whatever you want? But this is not the topic I, I deeply believe. The key factor, and I think that the, the tricks, is to first think as an architect. What does it mean to think as an architect when you are faced to a one dentition case? This means that you look at the case and you need to understand and you need already to draw in your mind where you would like to place a white corridor in the space. That's the first crucial step. Because for example, for that kind of severe cases, do you think that at this step, the key factor is just to know if we, I have to use some composite, some crown, or some veneers, or some implant, or I don't know? No. The only key factor is to understand where do I want to place the good white proportion. Because of course, for example here, this is a good proportion. But the question is, is it the good proportion in the good position? or not? Of course not. So the question is, do we have to create this proportion only from the pink? Do we have to create this proportion only from the white? Or do we have to create this proportion from both parts? When you have the answer, after and only after, you will start to think as a dentist, which is the lesson number two. What does it mean? It means that what will be the most efficient tool that I can use to reach the design that I have already validated and draw in the space. And then the question will be, do I want to go for a crown? Do I want to go for a partial bonded restoration? Or do I want to go for direct or no prep restoration? This is basically I think the, the, the good thinking process, the right thinking process for the dentist. And then you will understand that for such a case where probably all my buccal enamel is perfect, but as you can see, because of the anorexia and bulimia, all the palatal enamel disappear and started to uh, destroy a little bit of the incisal edge. Of course, the question is only to understand that we need to be um, as minimal as possible, which means using only one palatal veneers, and these palatal veneers will include inside the small part of the incisal edge that we would like to lengthen. So it will be a monolithic pieces, and thanks to that, first we will protect the palatal, we will reconstruct the good function, the new, new guidance, and also with the same pieces we will improve and we will enhance just the smile line of the patient uh, because we will reconstruct and lengthen a little bit the incisal edge from only one simple part. Of course, with these simple tools, you can already start to modify and to enhance the appearance. 
Then sometimes we can go a little bit deeper because of the severity of the case and then we will have to reconstruct with two pieces, one palatal veneers and one buccal veneers in order to reconstruct the function and also the aesthetic. And for that we will use what Francesca Velati has proposed at the end of the notice or in 2010 in the GPRD uh, using the sandwich sandwich approach which means two pieces and thanks to the use of partial bonded restoration we have almost nothing to touch on this already very uh, damaged and and destroyed uh, two structure and of course with that it's a little bit more complicated more challenging but of course we still continue to preserve the maximum of the two structure and in case of very severe clinical situation of course sometimes we have to go back to the basic which means making a crown lengthening making a new design and because we have no more enamel then we prefer to go for even if we keep everything vital, but we prefer to go with a monolithic crown in order to go monolithic and multi-shade, so it's like Emax Multi, for example, and with that, we will be able to reconstruct, you know, the full arch of the patient. So at the end, with these three different clinical situations, you can see that the design, the thinking process is still the same, we just change only the tool to reach the final design that we were looking for. So it has to be like this. So I will present the full mock-up concept just uh, around the prepless approach in order just to give you all the recipes and all the workflow that uh, we want to share with you. So of course, we will use a very um, characteristic uh, cases of uh, one dentition with anorexia bulimia case. And as you can see here, it's a very severe case, especially in the upper arch. She has been anorexia bulimia. And uh, of course, after that, uh, now the patient is looking for a new aesthetic, she is looking for protection, she has some uh, sensitivity on some, on some tooth, she has been already treated in the US with some uh, fiber post and uh, root canal treatment because of this uh, sensitivity, especially from one canine and one molar. So again, the challenge here is first to be able to draw the future. And after, we will present how to uh, deal with the modern tool in order to reach the final uh, design. So, what we know from now more than 10 years is whatever will be the article that you can find in the literature for the last 10 years, most part of the... Uh, of the author agreed on, on one fact. The concept of the treatment is still the same. If you want to redesign the smile line, you will have to increase the vertical dimension. But in most part of the case, if we increase the vertical dimension, it's not for aesthetic reason. It is mainly just to get for free space to reconstruct the anatomy that we lost. This means re reducing the biological cost of the treatment. And after that, then you have different methodology to reach or to follow this basic, basic approach. So the first option is a very nice option, very nice article that has been published by Mauro Fladerni and the beginning of the notice about the MIPP where he proposed 
of course, to increase the vertical dimension. And thanks to this increment, it will reduce also the biological cost of the prep. So even if this is um, a crown that will be used, you know, to reach the final design, the crown will be minimally invasive because they will prep only in enamel and it will be a monolithic restoration which means very thin in the cervical area and this can be a very nice option even if this is in the traditional way which means a pros but in a contemporary uh, aspect because the prep will be less invasive the option number two the methodology number two that we all know has been proposed by Francesca Vellati at the end of the notice and as I told you it was really something very important for the dental community to understand uh, and to change completely you know the vision of that kind of treatment especially for the full mouth rehabilitation in with eroded uh, dentition. And she proposed at that time, you know, what we call the sandwich approach, which means bonding two pieces instead of one in order to preserve as much as possible, you know, the tooth structure. The only, if I can say that, the only issue of a such technique is that and you have a, num a certain number of appointments and after all of these appointments, you have to reconstruct during these different appointments, you have to reconstruct, you know, all the uh, posterior part with some uh, silicon index and uh, direct uh, composite. And of course, we, we can't say that it's very easy, you know, to reconstruct all the full mouth for rehabilitation, especially for the new function, the new vertical dimension, uh, only with uh, direct composite. It's of course possible, but you need some, some skill for that because it, not everybody is able to reconstruct a full mouth for rehabilitation just with direct composite. And of course, the entire part will be made with some uh, indirect restoration. So even if not everything is simple, it for me, it was a very useful and precious uh, paper concept way of thinking at the end of the notice. And that's why working on this, trying to understand all of this aspect, all the different articles that we found in the literature, we came with a kind of evolution if I can say that. An evolution able to provide something a little bit more accessible, what we believe, we call it the full mock-up technique because it's not only a story of a full mock-up. We call it a full mock-up concept or full mock-up technique because there is a complete workflow around this. And uh, this is what we will present with you. So, through this uh, simple movie, you will understand uh, exactly what is a workflow. So from a wax up, we will pro provide a 3D printed template. This 3D printed template is filled with a bisacryl material like the Luxatemp. This is one of our favorite material for do, doing all of this uh, uh, mock-up uh, step. Very simple, very aesthetic. And once everything is uh, validated aesthetically and functionally, we will use it. You know, we will use it the full mock-up as a guide to prep our occlusal veneers because, of course, the originality of the, the technique is to import what we learned from Galib Gurel at the, at the beginning of the notice, which was using a mock-up as a precise guide in the entire area. And with that, with this beautiful way of thinking from Galib, we started to have a very simple vision of the veneers in the cosmetic part. And that's why we wanted to import this concept in the posterior part 
in order, you know, just to simplify the way, because the moment we have already the new occlusal anatomy, we have just to cut through in order to just ensure the minimal requirement, the thickness that we need, just to make some occlusal veneers. And after, it's just a question of sequences, how we record the bite, how we keep the vertical dimension, first by removing the posterior mock-up, and once the posterior mock-up are removed and uh, the prep are finished, then we lock the vertical dimension with only two small uh, pieces of luxabite, which is a bisacryl material, very easy to record the bite, and then we will start to prep the six anterior in order, you know, just to uh, finalize. And uh, once we finish with this uh, design in the anterior area, we have just to record also the bite using the previous record that we made in the posterior part. And then it's very accurate for the technician to have exactly the vertical dimension that has been validated. And after it's just a story of making impression of this in order just to go fast. We have some tips and tricks that we, we like to, to share with our colleague, like a wash technique, but in a very simple way. And this is for us uh, simple, a simple way of uh, working. So this means that um, this technique has been published six, seven, eight times in some French journal and will be um, published uh, in uh, spring, in the GPRD, spring 2018. Sorry, there is a small mistake on, on the date because it is already accepted since uh, more than one year, but it will be published next year. So what is it about this full mock-up concept? It's about providing four different steps, which means four appointments. So appointment number one will be the analysis of the case, records data, then send all the data to the technician to, prov to provide and perform a workshop. And when we will receive this workshop in the appointment number two, we will transfer this workshop in the mouth. And once it is validated, occlusally speaking and functionally speaking, then we will go for um, only the treating the upper arch. And when we will treat only the upper arch, we will use as an antagonist the lower mock-up, which has been, of course, validated. And once we glue the, the upper arch, then we go for the lower arch in order, you know, to uh, to split in two parts and to reduce the possibility of error, especially uh, with the bite. So going back to the case, what we need to record for this uh, patient as a first step is making some picture with a smile, a smile line, with uh, open, open mouth in order to understand what we can touch, improve, lengthen. Second, make some impression or if you go in digital workflow, you have to scan the initial situation. Very important is to record the vertical dimension by yourself with some uh, small uh, jig that you can play in the palatal part of the two central incisor and also making some freehand composite for the two central in order to set already the length, the new length of the two central incisor and also in order to help and assist your technician because once your technician has already the ideal two central incisor in terms of proportion, axis and uh, incisal edge position after you know for performing a wax up it will be very easy and uh, then you can you can avoid a lot of uh, mistake so if you just look in details of the different uh, different data that you need to to provide for your technician first pictures pictures of the face pictures of the smile intraoral picture then you will go for a cast or a scanning it will depend on your workflow then you need to do by yourself some free and composite and you will record it you will record um, this aesthetic 
validation. You have also to record the face references with this Dytramax device that we really like because thanks to this simple record, we will be able, you know, to draw the uh, interpupillary line on the cast, which will be our horizontal references, and the medium axis as the vertical references and the camper plane. So once you have all of this draw on the cast, after it's almost impossible to make mistake counting and things like this. And last, as I told you, is to just make a small, a small uh, increment of composite in the two uh, central uh, in the palatal area in order just to reconstruct, you know, the volume that we lost. We had some composites, and we try just to do something symmetric with the normal proportion. And when we we see in the mirror that it looks almost natural, then we like you and we check the bite. We need to get some symmetric uh, contact. And if the available space that has been created in the posterior part is the proper one, which means not too big or not enough, then we can record the bite. So the question of the Vertical dimension is, a, of course, is a big issue. Uh, we, we all, as a dentist, we are all are afraid by the idea of increasing the vertical dimension. But if you look at this beautiful paper from Jafar Abdo, we all know that today it's something very safe, very predictable. But just pay attention at, at a couple of numbers. So if you have to rise the vertical dimension beyond five millimeters in the entire area, then you will need some testing period, probably longer than if you are below. Below 5 mm, we never uh, make uh, some uh, testing period because, honestly, most part of the patients, they adapt very quickly to this modification. The, the only key factor is just to have a good bite, which means having the 14 upper able to touch the 14 lower. And after that, of course, the patient um, are uh, very satisfied without any kind of uh, sensitivity or um, things like this. And one of the questions when you rise the vertical dimension is thanks to the first analysis of your case, especially in the intraoral uh, observation that you have made in the first uh, appointment, is to understand for who will be dedicated the increment of the vertical dimension. So when you have all of this answer, then it becomes almost very easy for the technician to understand uh, where you want to reconstruct some volume. And from that, when you get this beautiful wax up, able to reconstruct all the anatomy that you have lost, now the question is try to transfer it in the mouth in a very accurate way. So one of the options that we have is to use the digital workflow, which means scanning the wax up. From that, we will create an STL file. And from this STL file, we will be able, you know, to provide um, a 3D printed model able to be the copy of the workshop and from that we will also make a 3D printed template which will be relined with light body silicon in order to increase the friction. So in one hand we have the rigidity of the printing uh, technology and second thanks to the light body which is inside we will have a beautiful friction, so which means that when we will insert in the mouth, there is no more pumping effect, which can affect the accuracy of the mock-up. So for that, we can use some different 3D print printer, and uh, now we are using more and more the one from uh, DMG, which is a new one, but you have a beautiful range of resin according to what you need, surgical guide, model, and things like this, you have different type of resin, and it's very useful and very performing. So once you insert this mock-up in the mouth, now it's time to validate. Validate aesthetically, validate uh, functionally. 
And of course, one of the key is first to check the byte, control all the point. And if you go in the digital workflow, which is what we made for that case is, the machine need to know what is already the final outcome that you are looking for. So you have to scan the full mockup in order to give all of this information, precious information to the device. And once the scanning is finished, now it's time to go to the regular physical prep, which means treating first the upper arch and after we will go for the lower. So one of the main issue when the dentist is faced with a full mockup, which is already validated, the question number one is how deep has to be my cut? And question number two will be which design? So to answer to the question number one, what we have proposed, as I told you already in introduction, is to use the mockup as a precise guide to, to control the <coughs> depth or the penetration of our uh, bur in the posterior uh, area. This means that, <coughs> for example, here, you, you can see that we will use, you know, the shaft of the bur as a bite stop. So this means that we can go uh, beyond 0.5 millimeter. And this is what we are looking for, 0.5 millimeter for the occlusal uh, surface. So this means that we are performing three grooves on the occlusal anatomy. And same for the lower here, because we were in the digital workflow, so we perform upper and posterior lower but only for that cases, otherwise, as I told you, we prefer to go for only upper and later on uh, lower, but this is just to show you how we have performed the case. And the question number two is about the design. The design, we all know that 15, 20 years ago, overlay has been proposed as a better solution compared with uh, the crown. But with the overlay, we still continue to destroy too much structure because we have to destroy the marginal ridge, which is a key factor, mechanically speaking. And uh, we also experience a lot of shipping mechanical uh, issue. Um, so that's why now we prefer to preserve the contact point, the marginal ridge, and just to place, you know, the restoration on top of the occlusal surface. This means that we will reduce in a significant way the stress and the loading on this, and we will get only compression on top of this restoration. That's why we are able, you know, to reduce the thickness of uh, the restoration. And when you look at the design of that type of occlusal veneers, you can, you can call it tabletop, you can call it what you want is not very important. What you need just to remind is all the prep on the marginal, on the proximal part has to be based on top of the marginal ridge. So the, the burr has to, to, to surf on top of the marginal ridge in order, you know, to offer the possibility with the new thickness of the new restoration to be in the exact continuity uh, of the marginal, uh, the natural marginal anatomy in order to have a nice emergent profile. But when you think about the buccal and the palatal part, of course, it will change. It will change because of what? Because of the clinical situation. If you have to reconstruct the cusp, you will have to go beyond the cusp with your prep. If you have to modify the smile line, you will have to, to go until the top of the buccal cusp in order, you know, to lengthen, to give the freedom for, uh, to your technician to lengthen the smile line with a new cusp that you would like to reconstruct. But if your cusp are already very good, you just need to increase the vertical dimension without affecting 
the design and the aesthetic of uh, the patient, then you will have to stay inside the cusp. So that's why you have different type of restoration, but all of this, of course, will depend just on the severity of the case and about your need. Do or not, I need to reconstruct the, uh, the anatomy of the tooth or which part do I have to reconstruct. So basically, this is the different type of uh, restoration that you can find. And of course, we touch almost nothing. Why? Because we are in a complete uh, additive philosophy. But even if we are in an additive um, philosophy, I strongly recommend to touch all the margin with this bur in order just to mark and to let your technician the possibility to read your margin and to understand where they have to stop and also to increase the thickness of the margin of your restoration to avoid some shipping. Because with no prep restoration, you can have a, a very thin finishing line and it would be like a carpaccio, which will create some cracks sometimes and it's not very good for the long term uh, behavior. For the palatal um, uh, veneers, you have just to make a small spot with the round burr just to stabilize, you know, during the, uh, the placement of your restoration at the, during the bonding protocol. So to record the bite, as I told you, first you prep the posterior mock-up, then you focus on the design, so you remove the mock-up, but you keep the six anterior mock-up to keep the vertical dimension and the bite. Then you record only the posterior. You can see on the step number three that you have some available space that you have already created thanks to the increment of the vertical dimension. You use the luxabite in order to lock it. And once the luxabite after two minutes is uh, set, then you remove, you have two pieces you, that you have to keep pre preciously. And of course, after you have to prep the six anterior, but you will have already the security, the seat belt of, uh, of the recording of the vertical dimension, which is the key factor. And you will have just to continue to inject only for the six anterior to connect the two uh, small pieces. So because of that, that case has been made uh, digitally, you can see that the beauty and the accuracy of the new digital tool that we can have or that we can play with is able to show you how precise is the surimposition of the two scanning that we have made. One scan was about the full mock-up, the second scan was about the prep. So because of the surimposition, the software is able to match these two layers and to understand very precisely what is the thickness between these two layers? So what does it mean? It means that after that, the system is very, very accurate just to propose you a shape, a morphology inside this volume. And all of this is made by the machine, but we have to be honest. The dentist need to have a good level in the software uh, management uh, or has to be very confident with the use of the CEREC if, uh, for example, you, you I, I give you the example of the one that we have used because we can't say that this is an easy um, access workflow to go digitally for such complicated case. Otherwise, you can go analogic and it works also very well, of course. So, once all of this is made, then we also have to double check with a regular imp uh, impression and cast in order just to check the fit of our restoration and also control the contact point and all the details. And one of the questions is about the selection of the material. And of course, when you want to speak about the occlusal veneers, the question is which material can we play with? Option number one is to go for lithium disilicate, which is for us one of the gold standard in terms of material. Of course, if you go for analogic, you will go for the press technique. And it's very 
versatile, you can go very thin, you have no limit, it's up to you because of the wax, and then you press. If you go digitally, you can also use the same material but in the in the block um, uh, format, and uh, you have to know that the minimum the minimum thickness which is required to to mill some occlusal veneers will be 0.8 millimeter because under you will break the the restoration. So of course it will be up to you. We have performed many cases with all the material of the market, so it is a very good option. Another family of material which is which can be also very useful is hybrid block. It can be from 3M with the Lava Ultimate, can be from GC with the Serra Smart or some other brand, but it is a functional laminate veneers. And one of the advantages of this material is the millability because we can go very thin and we can mill until 0.5 millimeter without breaking. And when you have to think about the cosmetic part, there is no more discussion because the cosmetic part has to offer a long-term stability, which means using some ceramic. And the beauty of the wax is once you place all the buccal veneers already, then you have just to... Sorry, when you place the functional veneers already on the model, then you can wax directly for the buccal part in order, you know, to have something very accurate, something very aesthetic and uh, have a very good fit between uh, the two pieces. So for that, we use, of course, some uh, Emax material. And I love this picture to let you understand exactly what is the outer, I mean, the shell on the left side, just the shell without any kind of uh, functional veneer. And of course, to have the final outcome, to get the aesthetic, you need to have the function. And that's why on the right side, you have the ideal uh, wedding between the outer, which is the aesthetic outcome, and the inner, which is the functional outcome. And both of them has to match perfectly in order to get something very aesthetic. So that's uh, different. Uh, um, it's a beautiful work which has, has been performed by Ilal Kudai from Istanbul. And I would like to thank him again for all of these beautiful collaborations that we are running since more than 10 years now. And then when it starts to make the try-in, the try-in is just supposed to make to mimic, you know, what will be the final outcome of, of the case, especially about the color of the paste and the final color with the ceramic and the paste. And during the, for the bonding protocol, we still love to use the one by one individual rubber dam. So for the molar, we are just changing the nature of the clamp. And for premolar and incisor and canine, we are using only the clamp from the lower central incisor. It's a 212 from Euphredi, very useful. And um, for the sandwich, we perform some sandwich for the premolar and as well for the uh, central incisor with one palatal veneer that we, we bond simultaneously with the buccal veneer. So it's still the same methodology. And with that, we are able, you know, to reach that kind of new anatomy. It's a complete reconstruction just by adding some material, reconstruct, protect, and that's exactly what we were looking for for a, such a case. So thank you, Ilal, for this beautiful work. And of course, it's a very significant in enhancement of the smile of this patient, especially when you, if you remember, how was the palatal anatomy of this patient at the beginning and the smile end of this patient. So it's an important change, but I think that this, with that type of methodology, which is the full mock-up concept, you can go in a plug and play approach, which means that, of course, it takes a bit of time to focus on details, to set the new vertical dimension, set all the small details that you are looking for, designed by yourself, the two central incisor. But once you send all of these precious data, 
then your mock-up will be very accurate and then you can go very fast in the in the chair side because you will be guided by this uh, precious tool which is um, the food mock-up concept so of course again the challenge today is to be able to uh, use all of this minimally invasive tool but uh, even for the functional topic and not only for the cosmetic rehabilitation and these different topics uh, are very highlighted in our training center in Marseille. We call it l'Institut de la Facette. And we are, the originality of this is that we are performing uh, live, live demo for veneers for in the cosmetic topic, um, live demo for veneers in the warm dentition topic using the full mock-up concept. So we will perform a full arch rehabilitation live which is not so common and uh, we also are able to perform uh, the use of the laminate veneer in the digital workflow so we organize some what we call super week so five days training comprehensive courses with uh, hands-on courses live demo and uh, all the participants will live with the dvd of the live and uh, some other tools so it's very um, intense program but of course you will be more than welcome to join us you can have all the details on our website and you will be we will be more than uh, happy to receive you in our training center so uh, the next course will be in uh, april in 2018 uh, three days where we will manage this uh, two topic cosmetic and one dentition around this guided dentistry and of course, um, Marseille is a very nice city and uh, not only for uh, dentistry, um, but also for having fun because uh, when you come for courses, you are not looking only for science, you are looking for science, but also to have very nice uh, social time. So um, this is a very nice movie to show you uh, how nice Marseille is and this is movie has been made by our uh, video cameraman uh, in charge of uh, our training center and by the way is also the world championship of uh, cliff diving and uh, as a small training when we have a group of dentists we are able just to uh, go in this uh, lovely and paradise place and uh, as a simple uh, training for him he is able to make uh, one cliff diving just for us and uh, it can be something very nice and uh, the dentist can have a swim and uh, this is something very pleasant very special and uh, it it has to be you know for like in any kind of courses it has to be something special so i guess that it will be special for you too. So this is just a couple of uh, small uh, movie just to let you see how it is.
So just to conclude, I would like to use this lovely African proverb, which resume, I think, a lot of uh, the thought and the spirit that we try to exchange with the community since more than 15 years and that you can find on uh, the Stal Italiano website too, is that if you want to go fast, it's better to go alone, but if you want to go far, I think it's better to go together. And probably the project that has been led by Joao is exactly in this spirit, which means trying to share with the maximum of people and providing the high level of science for everybody. And thank you, Joao, for inviting me. And thank you, all of you, to for attending this um, one week of uh, webinar and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much and stay tuned. Bye-bye.